So the Canelo on points meme continues. Canelo Alvarez defends his undisputed super middleweight titles against Jaime Munguia with a comprehensive unanimous decision victory. Straight off the bat, I've got to say, I've just watched this fight. I've totaled up. So this is my immediate impressions. I do agree with the unanimous decision. I had Canelo win in this fight, 117 to 110, which I believe is the exact same score as one of the judges had it. So I can't really complain. I think this was a fairly, I'm not going to say routine, because it, there was still, even though it was a comprehensive victory on the cards, it was a busy night's work for Canelo Alvarez. He did have to deal with some challenges from a very game and very capable Munguia in some cases. Uh, I say that because in the opening three rounds, I actually gave them all to Munguia. I thought he was doing very well, came out, he was moving well, there was a good poise he had, he was using his feints, using the jab, you know when to time it, but also knowing when to smother Canelo Alvarez. So there was a good balance of Jaime Munguia um, engaging, but also knowing to smother Canelo and nullify any Canelo off, uh, offense. However, Canelo Alvarez was still able to get in range and I felt like in the early rounds that was a sign of things to come. But uh, Jaime Munguia, he stuck with it. Once again, he was being very active with the jab in the second round, landing some clean offense. And of course, some of it was blocked, but some of it was scoring. And for the first time in a long time, Jaime Munguia uh, showed that you can attack Canelo Alvarez, particularly to the body, because he sunk in some very nice body shots, which Canelo, he didn't start reeling or anything like that, but it just made you wonder if Munguia continued that and was able to do that more consistently what kind of effect it would have on Canelo who at the best of times does have a bit of a suspect stamina um, going into the third it was a bit closer but I felt like Jaime Munguia was still ahead he was still that bit busier when he was able to string together some good offense sometimes even in the closing seconds you know he would just be able to Rock Canelo Alvarez's head back with a couple of shots and it was a good visual and I feel like that's probably what maybe got him the round when the rest of it had been a bit more even. However, we got to the fourth round and once again, it was looking like a similar kind of round where Jaime McGee was just a bit busier but then Canelo Alvarez just dropped him with this wicked left hook, right uppercut combo. Uh, real spicy two-piece with that one but Jaime McGee, he got up got straight back to his feet and he was right ahead of Canelo again like nothing happened so credit to him but of course that's a 10-8 round to Canelo and then the rest of the fight really just fell into this pattern of Jaime Munguia not really able to be uh, as active as he was before not as accurate as he was before and I feel like Canelo basically just warmed up into the fight you know his defense was a bit more on point he was seeing the punches before they were even coming and I feel like Munguia he ran out of ideas. He seems to be a guy who he sets up his punches with other punches. And even though he started quite well in those early rounds, as I say, he just ran out of ideas. And elite fighters, they they understand that when they're in a fight against a counterpuncher or the caliber of counterpuncher that Canelo Alvarez is, you have to be a bit more thoughtful, a bit more creative with how you set up your punches. It can't always just be um, punches for punches. It has to be feints. It has to be movement. It has to be timing, that kind of thing. And Munguia has those things, but just not to the same level as like a Dimitri Bivol. And so where there's that uh, lack of nuance, that lack of advanced strategy, I feel like that's what really cost Jaime Munguia because it got to a point where he was just going for the volume approach, which worked earlier on in the fight, but by this point, Canelo Alvarez is already, he knows what's going to be coming. Um, and obviously, if he doesn't know exactly, Canelo Alvarez defensively is, is quite difficult to, to hit clean. And even if you do hit him clean, he's very tough physically. He's got good chin um, and seemingly good powers of recovery too. So yeah, Jaime Munguia just wasn't able to keep a footing in the fight. And, of course, he's taking his own punishment, too, because Canelo, not afraid to dish it out. Um, although I do feel like it got to a point where Canelo Alvarez did look a bit laboured. 
like we've seen him in so many fights. Like Canelo Alvarez, it just gets to a certain point in fights where he just looks tired. Like even the expression on his face, he goes from like a quite uh, steely focus look to just oh, how many rounds we got left? Not like he's dog tired, but just like there's a a lethargy there. But nevertheless, he sees the fight out, and you know it was a somewhat decent, entertaining fight, but. Yeah, not the uh, thriller in Manila or anything like that. Just a, a, a good, solid performance, I feel. Um, and, of course, Canelo Alvarez wins, uh, what, nine rounds to three? I think that's what my scorecard says. So, decent. I'd say decent result. But, of course, this isn't the fight that we wanted to see. I made this very clear in the uh, in the pre-fight video I did for this one. We want to see say we want to see excuse me Canelo Alvarez fight David Benavidez and of course uh, Jim Gray pressed him on this because it's the fight we all want to see and of course Canelo Alvarez oh I need to rest I need to recover I need to spend time with my family but if the money's right you know me I'm Mexican I'll fight anyone I'll fight him right now come on man that's not good enough like. It's not surprising, which is is unfortunate, but it, it's so clear that Canelo Alvarez just doesn't want that fight unless it's for astronomical sums of money. I don't even want to hazard a guess what kind of figure Canelo wants, but it needs to be stupid money. Um, unless he's forced into a position, but even then, nobody's going to do that to Canelo. Let's be real. It's not going to happen, so... It's unfortunate because that really is the fight to make at 168. Um, and until then, no fight's really going to be a, an adequate substitute. This one wasn't, even though this is against Munguia. I said before, it's an acceptable fight. But given the context of Canelo Alvarez ducking David Benavidez, it's not, it's not good enough. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, but I guess we just have to kind of get on with it. Of course, call Canelo out for what he's doing, which is shamelessly ducking. All this nonsense about not fighting other Mexicans, but fights uh, another Mexican in Munguia. We knew that was nonsense. And it'll continue to be nonsense from Canelo, it seems. So uh, uh, I don't know what else to say, if, in all honesty. But yeah, check this fight out if you're um, up for a bit of entertainment. It was decent, but you know, past the third round. Yeah, it was really one-way traffic mostly. But nevertheless, credit to Munguia because I feel like he um you know, he tried his best. He did. Um he tried his best to step up to the mark and become undisputed champion, so you can't hold it against him. But Canelo, more of the same, I feel. And of course, uh we've got to call him out for what he's doing in not fighting Benavidez. But uh yeah, anyway, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you make of this performance from both guys? And what do you think is next? Leave it down below and I'll get back to you. But for now, thanks for listening and I'll catch you on the next one.